Didier, is this a reflation trade or a market reacting to something it didn't expect? Uh, first of all, we have to recognize that yesterday uh, when we reached the 3% level on the third year, it was an important milestone and we need to take a breather from that perspective. We can expect the bond market not to go in a, in a, in a straight line. I think there is many things to, uh, to expect in the future in terms of policy design and policy formulation and the road with fiscal policy is probably a slower pace than monetary policy which is instant gratification for the bond market. So what we expect in the coming months is more or less, for, first of all, uh, fluctuate between 225 and two, uh, 250 uh, just before the State of the Union and then we can have really the market really working with the reality of the policies. So I think we are probably entering in a bear phase for the bond market. It's a structural change together with a cyclical uptick for the economy which is bad for the bond market but it's a phase of normalization i think many players can be satisfied to see the bond market going up. Uh, we are seeing the administration working hand in hand with the Federal Reserve to prop up inflation. And this is something that we should be uh, happy with to see the bond market back in a normal territory. Well, elsewhere, asset prices have done well with the monetary policy mix that we've seen. If we do get that fiscal policy mix from the new government, is it for sure that asset prices will continue to move higher? I think there is, first of all, a good cyclical uh, boost that we were observing before the election that is positive for the manufacturers anyway, but also the, the, the fiscal drive will come out. The U.S. is taking the lead. Uh, China was already in the lead more than uh, uh, close to a year ago when it, they have to face very dire situations, so they were able to put together a very comprehensive fiscal policy. Now this is happening with the US and it will have beneficial effects for the rest of the world. Didier, the big sell-off has been witnessed in emerging market assets, currencies, bonds and stocks. Yes. How much further does this have to run? I think uh, one of the important markers is really the US dollar. If the US dollar doesn't break 105 against the euro, just to give a, an indication, uh, then it would create a kind of a basis for stabilization. They have been sold off indiscriminately, but I think the emerging market is a very wide diversity uh, group of assets, uh, and we should not uh, put all the, the babies with the bath there, because for instance, in emerging Asia, they are closely linked to the trade zone that is China and India, which are the, bis the big uh, you know, gross uh, provider of this world. And for that reason, we should expect a form of stabilization in Asia uh, market, especially considering that the Chinese market, uh, the equity market, is be behaving counter trend vis-à-vis -vis the, the other regional countries. Didier, what's the knock-on effect for Europe? I mean, we... It, it, if you look at the comparisons, equities are up slightly since Trump was elected. Bond yields have gone up considerably. Uh, how would you expect the European asset space to continue trading in coming weeks? I think there is the risk as. Uh, obviously shift from the US to the Europe. There is more political risk to come and the political risk is behind in the US. Uh, this requires a risk premium for assets. But I think the economic growth in Europe is very solid, very strong. If you look at the, the GDP number that you were presenting, uh, it's really on the way to recovery. There is political uncertainty, but I think Europe will also be lifted up by, by, by the US market, which will present the lead.